In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the all new GMK Tech Evo X1 AI Mini PC. And I believe they've just taken their line to a whole new level with this PC, mainly because this is powered by the new AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370, which offers absolutely amazing CPU performance and iGPU performance, because after all, we've got that 16 CU Radeon 890M here, and they've also managed to pack it in a super small form factor, as you can see here. I personally do love the design. It does have Oculink up front. We've also got USB 4. So if you did want to connect an external GPU, you've got two ways to go about it. 40 gig over USB 4 or 64 gig over Oculink. In this video, we've got a lot to check out and a lot to test with this mini PC. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate windows speaking of that let's head over to a new pc that i recently built as you can see we're running windows 11 and from settings we're going to go to activation settings it's going to tell us that we're not active we don't have a key installed so we're just going to paste it right in here choose next it's going to activate windows for us and we're ready to go if you're in need of cheap windows keys i'll leave a link in the description and remember you can use code eta for 25 percent off Inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the Evo X1 Mini PC, an HDMI cable, 120 watt power supply, a vertical stand so we can actually set this up vertically or horizontally, and it also comes with a vase amount that's not shown here. Personally, I've been using it with the stand because I do like the way it looks when it's set up like this. Plus, we've got a couple different power modes from the BIOS that we can use, and I've been in performance mode. It actually takes the wattage up on that HX370 to 65 watts, and when it's set up vertically, the intake vent over here is unobstructed so we can get the maximum flow through over the new cooling system they added to this device. They did include a little bit of RGB here. It's not super visible, so I'm not exactly sure why they did it, but once you get up close, you can see it from here. And as for I.O., up front, we've got that USB 4 port. We've also got Oculink, and I do have their new Oculink eGPU. I will be doing another video. I'll show off some performance there, but we're going to be testing it just like it comes out of the box. We've also got two full-size USB 3.2 ports up front and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Round back, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. In total, we can add three displays utilizing the HDMI port, display port, and USB 4 up front. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370, 12 cores, 24 threads, all based on Zen 5. The Radeon 890M iGPU with 16 compute units, and this will clock up to 2900 megahertz. GMK Tech is going to be offering this in a couple different RAM variants, 32 or 64, but both of them do utilize LP DDR5X running at 7500 megahertz. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, two M.2 PCIe 4.0 SSD slots, and you can add four terabytes in each of these slots, bringing it up to a total of eight terabytes of storage with this mini PC. The first thing I always like to do with these mini PCs is just take a look at the BIOS to see if we've got any performance settings. And with this, we definitely do. Right here on the main menu, power limit settings. Out of the box, it's set at balance. That's gonna give us up to a 54 watt TDP. Performance mode is gonna take us up to 64 watts. This is how I'm gonna be running it. It also adds a little more fan speed. Overall, it's not super loud, but it is noticeable going from balance to performance mode. That fan does spin up a little bit more. From advanced, there's one more thing I wanted to do here. And it's just going to be from our GFX configuration. Our frame buffer, or VRAM, is at 4 gigs. This is a 32 gigabyte mini PC here. So I'm going to go up to 8. And that's all. So we've just added a little more VRAM. And we went to performance mode. I'm going to hit save changes and exit. And we'll get right into Windows. Getting right into Windows here. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI 9 HX370 with the Radeon 890M. In performance mode, this thing is really quick. We've got 12 cores, 24 threads. This is the 32 gig unit, so we get 32 gigs of LP DDR5X running at 7500, but they do sell a 64 gig kit. 
And of course, we've got that new Radeon iGPU, the 890M. We went into the BIOS, dedicated 8 gigs of VRAM. This has those 16 CUs, and it is a great performer. Uh, checking out CPU-Z, I wanted to show you that in performance mode, this does go up to 64, 65 watts. So right down here in hardware info, you'll see right there at 64. The cooler they opted to use here does a really good job, and we'll take a look at that while we're gaming and at the end of the video. But uh, even at this higher wattage, I have not hit thermal throttle with it yet. The next thing I wanted to do was take a look at a couple benchmarks, and the first one we have here is Geekbench 6, and with this HX370 at that 65 watt mark, we're putting down some great single and multi-core performance. Single core coming in with a score of 2,929, multi 13,033. So yeah, this is on par with other HX370 systems that we've seen around this same wattage. And as for iGPU performance, I used 3D Mark Time Spy. At that 65 watt performance mode, we came in with a total score of 4,038, graphics score 3,649. Again, from the BIOS, we can overclock the RAM, and right now we're only at 7,500 megahertz, but going up to 8,000 would help out with these scores and gaming all together, because after all, with these integrated graphics, it does rely on system memory as VRAM, and theoretically, if we can make that a bit faster, we could see some better performance here. But these synthetics are not looking bad at all for an iGPU, so now it's time to move into some real-world gaming. And the first one we have here is Marvel Rivals. Keep in mind, this is early access and more optimization should be coming for this game. I've really been wanting to see some amazing performance on an iGPU, but right now we're at 1080 medium FSR set to balance, and there were some areas with large explosions that did give me dips under 50. But overall, we're seeing an average of around 68 FPS. Next on the list, Hogwarts Legacy 1080 low settings with FSR set to balance. Unfortunately, I still have to drop this down to low even on that 890M to get over 60 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. This is one of those games that's given me issues since it was released on any iGPU I tested on. We do need to enable FSR frame generation if you want to get over that 60 mark. And even then, at 1080 low with frame gen on, we're only seeing an average of around 66 FPS. Going back just a bit, one of my favorite games, Fallout 4, 1080, medium, and I do think that I could take this up to high on this system. If you take a look at Afterburner, up in the top left hand corner, we're only pulling a maximum of close to 45 watts every once in a while, and we're under 20% CPU utilization. I have seen GPU jump up to around 80 every once in a while, but I do think we could take these settings up just a bit. Borderlands 3 actually ran pretty well, but there are a few hiccups every once in a while, especially in the area I'm at right now. We're at 1080 medium with 75% resolution scale, and we're getting over 80 FPS on average. And it might be kind of hard to notice in a YouTube video, but when there's a lot of explosions on screen, I get these hiccups going on. And finally, we've got Spider-Man 2, 1080 high with FSR frame gen on. That's really how you want to run it if you want to go over 60 at 1080. Frame gen is really a must, even on the HX370, but if you remember correctly, this game didn't launch very long ago. The developers have actually done a really good job with updates helping out with performance because it was a mess when it first launched.
The last thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption and CPU temps. When it comes to total system power consumption, I use a kilowatt meter connected to the wall, and even in performance mode at idle, this thing only draws 9 watts, 1080 gaming, up to around 78, and the maximum I saw while running Cinebench R24 on this device was 92 watts. Remember, this comes with a 120 watt power supply, so we're under that. And remember, we've got that quiet and balanced mode from the BIOS just in case you want it to draw a little less. And as for CPU temps, I think that GMK Tech did a great job with the cooling system they have here. Going from balance to performance mode does ramp that fan up just a bit, but it's not super annoying. And at a 65 watt TDP, on average while gaming at 1080p, 66 degrees Celsius. And the maximum I saw this hit while running Cinebench R24 was 82 degrees Celsius, so we never got close to thermal throttle. Overall, I do like the design that they've come up with. The thermals here are great, and given the fact that we can take this HX370 up to 65 watts, does offer some great performance with that Radeon 890Mi GPU. Now there is more that we can get out of this. Obviously, we can do some tuning from the BIOS, but we've also got that Oculink and USB 4, so if you're interested in seeing this thing connected to an eGPU, like the new GMK Tech Radeon 7600 MXT AD GP1 external GPU docking station, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look at the GMK Tech Evo X1. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'm going to leave some links in the description. Their official website carries this and it's over on Amazon. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.